You may not believe this, but one of the tasks that gets inevitably delegated to some relatively new hire at an organization is actually going through and getting an inventory of all the applications that are in use. That may seem crazy. I mean, don't we know what applications were running in the company? But over time, the number of applications, the versions of those applications can get out of control. And one of the tools that virtualization can bring into play to help mitigate that issue is literally called application virtualization. So let's talk for a minute about what that is and how that fits into the big picture of being a virtualization administrator. When most of us think about an application, what do we envision? Probably some sort of window that opens up. And behind the scenes, we might be aware that, well, the reason why that window opened up and a particular exciting program opened up for us is because well, all of the, the binary bits that make that program up are stored on a disk. And then those bits get loaded into memory and then are processed by the CPU. And all of that is happening through what? Through the local operating system, grabbing all those pieces and manipulating them and making them happen. We said the challenge for an enterprise administrator is the fact that there's a lot of operating systems out there that have existed over time. And so the question is, well, which applications are available? Ensuring that the right applications are installed on our systems is important for the perspective of compliance, security, and stability. So application virtualization is all about coming up with a new way for those applications to be deployed and consumed. Now, for the most part, we're not trying to create anything too radical in terms of how the user experiences an application. We still want to give them a window with a program that they can open, launch, execute, run, close when they're done. So the virtualization aspects are going to be the things that are behind the scenes. And there's a couple of different ways that that application could be launched. One method is for the client to launch an application which triggers a connection to a remote server. And that app, <clears throat> and it is actually that server that goes through the process of finding the binaries, loading them into memory, and using the server's CPU to provide that application. But the display of that application is not being viewed on the server. The display is coming right back down to the client so that they can see the window that they would normally see and interact with it just like they normally would. The interesting thing about this is that multiple users could connect in to this one server that has the application installed in such a way as to support multiple users connecting. And each of these users could be independently running that application, seeing their own personal window. This means that the application doesn't have to be deployed 10,000 times for 10,000 users, but just enough times on enough servers to support those users connecting in. This actually increases the weight of responsibility on our network to support these connections going back and forth. You literally can't run the program if you don't have access to the network. But it decouples the application from the box that the user sits on. So this first style of application virtualization often goes under the term of terminal services or a remote desktop experience. But it's not the only form of application virtualization. Sometimes applications don't work well when you've got 10 users all actually running the one same binaries in memory 10, 15, 10 or 15 times over. So in those situations, another technique might be available wherein the user once again launches an application on their desktop, but they connect to a virtualization host. What does a virtualization host provide? Virtual machines. And it's going to be the CPU, RAM, and disk available within that virtual machine that is used to launch the application that is needed. But that application is viewed on the user's desktop. They don't have to see the whole VM. They just see the one application that they launch, and they're happy as a clam. So this is called desktop virtualization. And again, the advantage is if there are 10 users, there will be 10 virtual machines being used to provide those applications. But this means that there could be 40 users, but if only 10 of them need to use the application at the same time, then those 10 separate virtual machines can provide a complete isolated experience for that application to run correctly. And again, I didn't need to deploy it to any one particular desktop. A user could move to a different desktop. The application would still be accessible because it's on the network. Once again, though, we do have to keep in mind this does increase the network traffic going back and forth. And then there's a third main type of application virtualization, and that's called application streaming. I stream, you stream, we all stream for app stream. 
So with application streaming, we launch an application and then we're going to connect to an application hosting server which has that application available. It's on that server's disk. And then that application is delivered to the desktop where it can then execute and provide the user experience. So that means that we are putting the, some of the weight back onto the desktop. It's the desktop's disk that now is going to temporarily hold that application and memory that will host the execution of that application and CPU that will process that application. The network load is on demand. When we first open up the application, that triggers the streaming download of that application to execute it. But even then, if an application has a certain amount of disk content that's associated with it, but to initially run it only requires, say, 50% of that file to be delivered, then only 50% is delivered at the initial startup. When a user needs to use a particular function or a particular option that then digs into some of the other remaining portion, then at that point, that will also be streamed down. But again, it's on demand. It's only once that extra feature is needed to provide the functionality that we're looking for. So as we look at a terminal service or desktop virtualization or application streaming method of application virtualization, what's the common denominator? Or to put it another way, if we're in an interview getting asked, so how would you describe application virtualization? What's our answer gonna be? Well, here's our quick and dirty definition, my friend. Application virtualization is when client applications are hosted remotely, but are viewed as if they were installed locally. And because of that, applications are centrally stored and can be centrally managed instead of trying to track down every application installed on every single desktop that you've ever created. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.